All right. All right, now we are going to be talking about Tarkov here. You know, good old, good old beta testing Escape from Tarkov. You know, at this rate, Daisy, this might take the cake for, you know, being in beta testing. You know, Daisy was in beta testing for years. This game, woo, it's pushing it. Anyway, this is about all the people that just give really bad misinformation. Oh, you... You need a 4090 and a 5900 whatever XD3 or whatever the fuck it is. Like, no. I'll just just stop. You're embarrassing yourself, okay? And the, oh, you need, okay, 32 gigabytes of RAM minimum. And it has to be at 4200 megabytes per second. And, no. Okay, just shut the fuck up. Alright? No disrespect, but just, just stop. You're making yourself look stupid in front of everyone that's actually, you know, knowledgeable about technology. The fact that a example, an 8700K, I was reading on Reddit, this guy has an 8700K and a 2070, okay? Yeah, they're old. But are they really that old? No, they were sort of top line when Tarkov actually came out, right? Now, here's the funny part about that. This guy says, oh, well... Now, I'm averaging between 80 to 90 FPS. And and it's like, well, okay, that's, you know, Tarkov, 80 to 90 FPS. That's not that's not even that bad, right? That's that's pretty good. And this dude comments, oh, yeah, you should upgrade to a 5900 XD3 fucking AMD CPU top spec and get a 4090. Oh, and you're... you're 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM is too slow. You you need highest. You need the 5400 megahertz of top range memory, and and it needs to be 32 gigabytes minimum. And what? And apparently that's gonna give him 130 FPS. Okay, for one, the whole 130 FPS, 150 FPS, 180 FPS. That's a lie. Okay, that's a lie. And the reason that is a lie, okay, and I'll, I'll just put my stats up, I'm not rocking anything special, but the reason those stats are a lie is because majority of the people that do those performance tests are doing them in an offline with the AI bots disabled. The AI bots alone in an offline server, enabled and disabled, is at least a 40 FPS penalty. Minimum. Okay, now if you go into a public lobby, you've then got to d d deal with not the server not even being local. You've got to deal with it being their server, which is also another chunk of frames out of your PC. Then you've got to take in consideration of the actual players on the map, which again is another chunk out of your PC. Because it doesn't use the GPU for fuck all to do anything, it, besides basic graphical rendering. The AI, the fucking the server side shit, all that bullcrap, all CPUs that are putting it on the GPU's load, which is just silly. All right, why would you shove everything on the CPU? But either way, it's just it's it's silly to so just stop recommending people to upgrade their PCs because it's just dumb. Okay, a top spec PC, you're gonna get 120 to 130 FPS, and that's it. That, that's literally it. I'm sorry, that's it. If you overclock, and if you do stuff like that, and if you literally, if you install a Windows Lite, optimize Windows and all that bullcrap, have nothing in the background, you optimize SMT or hyperthreading or efficiency core or whatever the hell it is these days, optimize all that, because 6 cores and 8 core and all those higher tier core ones that also have threads, you don't really need the threads for gaming. Or for anything for that matter, unless you're doing hardcore editing or stuff like that. Because 6 cores and 8 cores is more than enough for Tarkov. And Tarkov was on, only designed for the 6 core max anyway. So, yeah, it's a, it's a waste of money. So just stop recommending it. And I'm going to show you right here. Keep in mind, okay, an 8700K. Even, even a 10 series Intel chip can average about 80 to 90 FPS. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you what mine averages. I have a 3770 third gen stock and a 1060 3 gig low tier model. Okay. With 16 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz RAM, which is 
every if you if I was to post those on on Reddit, okay, and ask why my frames are bad, the whole redditors of technicians, okay, that aren't really technicians, they just say, hey, throw money at it, that'll fix your issue. No. Let me show you the performance I get, okay, in my match. Let me just load into a match and I can show you. Now, I am going to do it offline, but as you can see, I'm going to do offline, but I'm going to do enable, and enable PvE as online, as online, enable bosses, okay? This will, this will put, make it as close to as an online match without actually being an online match. Now again, 1063 gig, low tier model, nothing good. 3770, again, stock, non-cake, nothing good. 16 gigabytes of slow RAM, again, nothing good. So, top left performance will show my ordinary performance of what I'd usually get. 70, 76, usually drops to about 60 with the scav spawning. Again, you know, moving around. You can probably see, hang on, let me, let me see if I can increase the, uh, the graph size so you can see better. Okay. We're back. I've increased the graph size so you can see. Now, I just want to point this out here. Okay. I'm, I am recording with the GPU. I'm recording at 50,000 bit rate. And I'm recording at 1440p, even though I'm in 1080p. So, I can upload it in better footage and get a better encoder. So, just keep that in mind. That is a lot of stress on the GPU. Especially it being a low tier 1060. With that much bit rate. It's just... Just give it a break. Okay. But, if you take a close look... And my frames. These will be the amount of frames I would get on a third gen i7. Okay. With 16 gigabytes of low tier RAM. With the hyper threading enabled and in use. This is my frames. And you telling me you can't play at this frame rate. I don't know where people are getting these crazy stutters from. Yeah, you open your inventory, it'll happen from time to time. As you can see on the graphs. But where people get a stutter where they just stand still for like 10 minutes. I have the same amount of 16 gigabytes of RAM if not slower. Do you see me getting constant frame hitching and constant issues? No. Your excuse might be, oh but he's in an offline mode. I'm in an offline mode with bots. Okay. Which means my performance will be exactly the same if not give or take a frame. Than the actual online match because i'm still using my hardware to not only render the server but to also but to also render in the ai itself now you want to tell me this game is not playable at 60 to 50 fps due to the nature of tarkov this is playable okay no frame hitching no issues i can drop items i can pick items up Still no frame hitching. The hitching happens when you open up your inventory, but that's literally Tarkov. If you used to get MS Afterburn, it would happen to you as well. But literally no hitching, that's far a shot. You telling me you can't this you know on an you telling me on an I7 8700 k five generations Newer than my i7 cannot get the same or better performance in terms of average and smooth ability. Look at that graph. Okay? It's gonna be embarrassing if I died with scav. But look at that. Look at that graph, okay? Yeah, it has its minor spikes, but it, as you've seen me turn and fight, it's not that bad, okay? It's not as bad as half of the things I see on Reddit of people complaining. You know, you go here, you can collect all the all the stuff you want to collect, right? Doesn't lag. You can get over here, you can sneak, maybe hit him with another pop. It's not lagging. My usages, they're not maxed, but I know for the fact the CPU and GPU are perfect with each other.
because 1060 with a high-end CPU only gets about 70 frames, give or take a frame. The CPU only gets about 60 to 70 frames, give or take a frame, depending on the maps. That's just how this game works, okay? Now, let's talk about why the game lags when you scope in, okay? You might be wondering, okay, I'm at 60 frames right now, okay? Oh, but when I scope in, why am I at 45? If you notice at the top of the screen, uh, you got percentage on the GPU, you got temperature, clock speed, memory speed, VRAM usage. You'll notice it's a 2997, okay? That is because when I'm not zoomed in, the texture at the very end unrenders itself because I'm using MIP streaming, okay? But when you scope in, it renders it into a high resolution texture and that's what causes the VRAM to spike. That is the cause for stutters, that is the cause for a lot of issues when it comes to this game is the VRAM usage and the v and how the VRAM works in this game. It's just as bad as normal memory. To combat the VRAM issues, you got two things. Now, don't mind, I'm on a 3 gig card, so I'm on the lowest gig card you'll probably ever have. Okay. You go to your settings, you'll obviously go to your graphics, okay. You got options here, you can do what I've done. And you can go to AMD FSR, and you can use that if you want. If you don't want to use FSR, you don't have to use FSR, okay? You don't have to. You can come down here, enable MIP streaming, and tinker with these. Just mess them around, change them. It's highly dependent, okay? But there's something very, 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 very important that you must need to know. You have to have the game on an SSD, okay? If you are playing Tarkov on a mechanical disc spinning drive, then I don't know what to tell you. You're not going to have like frame times like I've got. Okay, you're not going to have the top left. This, this, this represents my stutters. You're not going to have a smooth time frame like I am when running around. Okay, my RAM's not peaking. I'm at 12 gigs of RAM right now. 12 gigs of DDR3 RAM. Okay, and it's the VRAM that's peaking. So the people that keep saying, oh, you need six, you need 32 gigs of RAM to play Tarkov. I've just proven it there. Wrong. Oh, you need a, a 5900 fucking XDD3 fucking dumb AMD 900 pound CPU. No, shut the fuck up, okay? You don't need that either, okay? Your CPU's fine. This is just how the game is designed, okay? It's literally how Tarkov is designed. Tarkov just runs bad, it's always been bad, the game's always been garbage coded, that's just how it is, okay? Now I'm going to show you how other people do uh, FPS tests, and I'm going to show you why they're fake. Enable practice, I'm not going to enable PvE, okay? PvE, off, okay? Now let's go. Oh, would you look at that? Okay. Would you look at those frames? We're in the exact same area, on the exact same side of the map, in the exact same spot. And now I've got, I went from, keep them on. I had 55 to 60 FPS here, okay? And all I did was disable AI. Same time, same map, same location. I've gone from having 55, 60 to 105 FPS. Just from disabling the AI alone, I've gone to 105 FPS, okay? Now, I could go online and be like, yeah, boys, look, uh, 3770, 1060, 100 FPS. And then everyone will be like, well, how did you do that? And then I'll make a video on the useless pointers on, hey, do this, this, and this. And, you know, make sure the compatibility mode in the game set correctly. And No, okay, it's fake. It's it's fake. Okay, all that shit that people come up with is fake. And this is how they, they, they show the fake FPS boost. They go into an offline without AI, and you get 50 to 60 FPS boost. That's how people are getting 150 to 200 FPS on the new CPUs. Yes, you can do it if you overclock them, 
Yes, you can hit high frames, but you cannot get a consistent 150 to 200 on the new chips. And even if you can somehow reach that consistently, are you really willing to spend 800 to a grand on a brand new PC just for an extra boost in 30 to 40 frames of your old system, despite it not being the system's fault? Being the game is at fault, not the system. Now, if Tarkov actually handled AI correctly in this game, this is the performance you could expect. Okay, you could expect 100 frames. Notice, without AI, the graphics, all this, no stuttering, no spiking, apart from the inventory, that's still there, because it's uh, just normal. But notice the frame doesn't drop. That's proof. That is, that is hard proof. The reason for low performance is the AI in Tarkov because they are so badly coded into the game and so and this, the, the, the hardware underutilizes itself and doesn't know how to control the AI. And that's what causes low frames. It's as simple as that. But I can tell you how to make low frame rate playable and not stutter like crazy. So you're running along and then you're just stopping like this constantly. I can show you how to fix that. Okay. Okay, now we're at the PC end. Okay. Now we're gonna make this let's make this nice and nice and simple, okay? Step one, you're gonna need something called process lassos, okay? Very neat program, you can get it, it's free, completely free, you don't have to pay for pro. You can get this, okay? Really good tool, very handy, and I'm gonna show you why. Active processes, make sure Tarkov's running, right click it, go to CPU priority, go to always, hit high. Okay, then affinity. Go to always, select CPU affinity. If and only if, this, this is highly dependent on your system, you want to do the use only available cores things, do not use the option in the game, use this, okay? Go to nodes. That'll be your CPU one, that'll be your thread one. CPU two, thread two. CPU three, uh, yeah, thread three. CPU four, thread four, etc. It'll be It'll be caught and thread, caught and thread, caught and thread, caught and thread. So you'd want to do thread 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 no it's only cores enabled now the game will be forced to only run on those cores if that's how you want to disable smt or or hyper threading without losing the threaded performance for windows and all the other applications all right then you hit okay bang done my game runs better with it on so i'm going to leave it on next thing to fix the stuttering you're having where the game skips and skips and locks up and freezes and skips and you have a gunfight and it freezes and you die and you close the game and you punch a monitor okay to fix that go down here go to your windows you go to this pc you right click you go to properties okay that's going to bring up this window there's proof right there 3770 3.4 3.9 boost 16 gigs right there there's proof on 116. you go to advanced system settings drag this across you'll be on computer name go to from heart go from computer name to advanced and advanced go to performance go to settings okay once you're in here ignore all this bullshit that people tell you to do this hasn't made a difference in gaming since windows 7 and the reason why is because this used to disable the arrow effect on the bar and turn it to classic windows that's what provided the better imp improvement performance doesn't work on windows 10 don't even bother changing it go to advanced Come down, go to virtual memory, okay? Okay, this part, this part right here, extremely important, okay? Really important. Now, I will say off the bat, uh, you know, uh, people say don't put it on an SSD because it'll damage your SSD, ruin the lifetime of your SSD. Completely untrue, okay? Super untrue. In fact, I've had this on my SSD for the last three years. Completely fine. Okay, it's only worn out maybe 9% of my SSD out of the total of 100, which is nothing. By the time this kills your SSD, you'll already have upgraded or quit gaming to begin with. Quite as easy as that. Now, me, I have 16 gigs of RAM. The way I see it, if you have 8 gigs of RAM, set this to initial size, I don't know, 20, 20,000 on both. Just to just to make it so it's twenty thousand consistent, just whether it needs it or not, it's got twenty thou. Whether you want to do that, that's up to you. Personally, me, I'd I'd like to have less computing going on, and if it needs it, it has it. Right. 
if you're on 16 gigs of RAM like me, you can drop it down a bit. So maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe do eight, maybe do eight gigs and 16 gigs of VRAM. That way it has 16 gigs of normal RAM and 16 gigs of VRAM. And you can uh, offset the initial and maximum because you have that a larger buffer of RAM to where it's unlikely it's going to use 20 gigs of VRAM, right? Even more unlikely. If you have 32 gigs of RAM, you could probably set this to maybe 4,000 and 12,000 to be safe. Basically, the more real RAM you have, the less VRAM you need. Just always make sure this is on an SSD. Otherwise, you're going to lag, you're going to stutter, it's going to cause issues, okay? So for me, set it 20, uh, our mine's at 8, as we, mine's already set up, look, but obviously you put yours in here. Let's say worst case scenario, you put 20,000, hit set, okay, you hit okay, you hit okay, you, you've done that, that's done, okay? That will eliminate the stutters, that will eliminate the hard crashing, that will eliminate the open up the inventory, the screen will freeze for a minute. That will fix the, I shoot my gun and the game locks up and you lose the gunfight. Or maybe you pick an item up off a shelf and as you pick that item up, the game freezes. Or a nade goes off and the game freezes. This will fix that. Okay. This will help you out and it will fix that. Uh, let me show you a tweet from Tarkov. Okay. They've got the square box. It's literal Tarkov. It's business. It's got the check mark. It's from Tarkov themselves. And they put, and I quote, you can try increasing your page file size to 20 or 30 gigabytes or as much as you can spare. And the dude's issue was, are there any graphics, uh, settings, graphics, system tweaks available to help reduce the lag and stuttering in game at the moment, especially on Shoreline, understand the beta of the game and it will get better, but just looking for anything that can help. Okay. And they just told increase page file to 20 or 30 gigabytes. Personally, I think that's a bit excessive, 20 to 30. But after I did this, completely resolved all my stuttering. You're still going to get the occasional micro stutter when opening your inventory that lasts like a millisecond or something like that. But that's, it's Tarkov. Like, what, what do you want? Okay, the game's beta. The game's fucking a spaghetti of code. Like, what do you want from them? Okay. But, uh, yeah. This just validates that I'm not just fucking spitballing. This was a fix. It's been a fix since 2018, and I've been using it since 2018, and it's worked out well for me. I used it on 8 gigabytes of RAM. I could play Interchange, I could play Customs, and I could play Factory. I could play Shoreline. I could play Labs. Couldn't play, um... You cannot play uh, that big, giant map that they've got. I can't remember what it was. Uh, Reserve was a bit of an ish map with 8 gigs of RAM. And the, that big lighthouse is the map. Lighthouse was a no-no on 8 gigs. Impossible. On 16 gigs, the game is completely playable. Anyone that says you need more than 16 is lying to you. It's just a waste of money. Don't even bother. Okay, just have this, have virtual memory set up to, to help with memory leaks. And you'll be good to go. Um, anyway, back on to dual channeling. Okay, so dual channel. Okay, so dual channel memory. Let's see if I can get a picture up here. Okay, so here we go. This is dual channel. This is what you would see. Okay, this is easier for you to see. So dual channel, you'll see that there's two different color codes. You have a black channel and a blue channel. Okay, one will be channel one or channel zero, and the other one will be channel one or channel two, however it's named in your in your thing, or channel A or channel B or however your motherboard manufacturer has labeled it. Okay, they're normally color coded. Or if they're not color coded, you can look it up in your motherboard's uh, documentation and it will tell you there. But anyway, if you have four channels of RAM, or four channels, yeah, four slots here, but you only have two sticks of RAM, make sure they are in the color coded or labeled slots. It's usually offset from each other. So again, blue and blue, you'd put a stick in blue and blue. And black and black, you put a stick in black and black, right? Do not put a stick in black and blue because then you're only in single channel mode. And that makes a huge difference to performance, especially a game like Tarkov because Tarkov is extraordinarily RAM heavy, okay? So make sure it's in dual channel mode. If, it, if you only have two slots, happy days. You're guaranteed to be in dual channel 
unless you're only running a single stick, which in case I, which in that case I advise you to always run the double a double stick. Okay, always run two by fours or two by eights. Never run a single stick. Hurts performance like crazy. And the next thing is XMP. Okay, now XMP is the factory overclock profile that comes with your memory sticks. Every known brand has an XMP profile. Some unknown brands don't even have them, but you'll want XMP or XOMC or whatever it is being rebranded to, but essentially XMP. It'll set your RAM to the correct speed it's meant to be. Mine is meant to be 1866, but because of the board and chip limitations, it is 1600, like shown in this picture. Um, yours will probably be higher on a newer chipset. You'll probably get 3200 on an XMP or maybe 4200 on an XMP. But whatever you do, enable the XMP, leave the voltage on auto and leave everything else alone. When it comes to your CPU ratio, if you don't care about your, um, if you don't care about power saving features and stuff like that, then just make sure that all your cores, your ind every single core, like individual core control is set to the same. So if you can run to 3.9 gigahertz, then set every single core to 3.9 instead of it being um, specifically controlled by Turbo Boost or whatever it is. And that will also help with performance slightly in Tarkov. Uh, that's, you know, that there ain't much else you can do apart from overclocking your CPU, which I can't tell you how to do that. It's too dangerous for someone new to do, and you'll get like maybe three FPS boost from that, so it doesn't really matter. But what I can show you how to do is a little thing called MSI Afterburner. Super easy program to use. Everybody's scared of it, okay? Some people will get high FPS to, uh, gains from this. Some people will get nothing from it, okay? If you're on a 10 series or higher GPU, so 10 series, 20 series, 30 series, 40 series, there's nothing to be scared of in this in here. You can crank all these around and move the voltages up and down, and you can move everything up, and the card will not break. It is hard locked at a voltage. It is literally hard locked. You can't go past it without modding the card, so it's impossible to break it. What will happen is you'll get glitches on the screen, the driver will crash, restart your PC, everything's back to normal. Easy as that. Now, for the basic of basics, memory clock, you most likely could push this to 250 or 300. I can personally push mine all the way up to 800. That's just mine. Uh, your core clock, again, I can only push mine to about 40, 50 until it crashes. You, my advice, you could probably push it to about 20, 30 on basic. But if you were trying to go for maximum overclocks, you'd put this up by 10, you'd hit apply, you'd run a benchmark like Heaven or something like that or Fermark. After about 10, 15 minutes, if it hasn't crashed, then put it up by another 10 and so on and so forth until it crashes, then dial it back by 20 and save the profile and you're good to go. Now, the most important slider in here for every single GPU user, okay, is fan speed by default you'll be on auto now the issue with it being on auto is the gpu will idle at 50 to 55 c that's fine that's fine okay there's nothing wrong with that but when you're gaming your fan speeds are slower which means your temps are higher which means nvidia's boost nvidia's boost control or boost to whatever it is the scaler because your temp is so high your boost will be lower, which means lower core clocks, less performance, right? So, best bet, MSI Afterburner, you go into the settings cog, you go to the fan control, and you'll hit enable user-defined software automatic fan control, hit enable, you'll get this graph, okay? All you'll do is get this bottom one, which will probably be on zero or anywhere on the screen. My advice, about 40C, just, just so you can have a nice quiet fan and you don't have to worry about any load fan noises, get the 40 and set it to either 25 or 30 speed. That'll be about roundabout idle speed. You won't hear it, but it's just enough airflow to keep the temperatures low enough to where when you're do not doing anything, it's using less power, it's making less noise, and it's also keeping temperatures low. 
every, everything's happy. But when you're actually using the card and it starts to gain temperature, say for instance, you know, you, you're playing a game and the temperatures are creeping to 50, okay? By the time the temperatures get to 50, the fan speed's on 60, okay? And let's say you're melting your card, okay? You're absolutely killing it, right? At 60C, you're just melting it, even though this card can go all the way to 80C without a problem, right? It'll, it'll survive, it won't have any issues. But the turbo boost curve won't go as high because the temperatures are high. So if you set the 100% the, the fan speed to 60, okay, when you're gaming, this, this, your fan speed will adjust based on your temperature. Lower the temps, the higher the boost clocks will, st will stay stable. And the higher the voltage will be, everything will be happy, better performance. You hit apply, good to go. The fan speed will auto adjust based on your temperature as it's showing here. Because I've been on zero speed for a few minutes now. The temperature's already climbed high. The fan curve has caught it. And now it's starting to come back down now. Just because the fan curve's turned on, my temperatures will come down, my core clocks will stay high. And it's as, it's as simple as that. And that's... That is... That's... That's the stuff that will help you with performance in Tarkov that will help the most. 